Good morning and welcome to Monday's Devotions and today we are starting on 1st Thessalonians and uh, I have to say I always get quite excited when we start a new book or finish uh, a book. So we're starting 1st Thessalonians uh, chapter 1 and we're going to be looking at verses 1 to 5 and um, you know, it's not imperative, but sometimes it's quite nice to get a background of when the book was written or in what situation or what were the people like. Um, you know, as I said, it's not a must because we're really seeking, you know, what is God saying to me? But, you know, that if you read uh, Acts chapter 16 and 17, specifically 17, you'll see uh, uh, Paul's missionary journey and his missionary journey is with Silas and you know they have gone to Philippi and you know they're thrown in in jail and then they get out and then they go on from there uh, to a couple of cities and then and then they go on through up to Thessalonia, uh, Thessalonica or Thessalonica and um, you know there they, they spend three uh, Sabbaths you know, which could mean that they spend just two weeks or it could mean that they spend nearly a month there, depending on, you know, how you, you when they arrived and when they left. But so they, they were ministering in the synagogue and, and people of uh, um, who were Greek and, and, you know, believed in God, they received the word, some Jews, to notable women in, in the city and gave their lives. And they're, you know, and there was a real uproar and they were chased out of Thessalonica uh, by the Thessalonians and uh, uh, then they went to Berea and uh, you know were the Berians they, they studied the word of God and they received salvation quite openly but the, the guys from uh, uh, Thessalonica they found out where they were and they basically chased them out of that city. So you can sort of get the, the persecution and the determination and the the straw the strength of, of, of these guys, you know. And so Paul's writing to uh, the, the church there, those people who received Jesus. And, you know, that's the situation that they're in. Um, I don't think the, the temperament of the townspeople, the city, you know, uh, changed dramatically. And so they would have been, they would have suffered uh, persecution and, and hardship in that, that sense. So we've got here, it says, uh, sorry, I'm, I've, I've already, already started yabbering away. So let, let's just read uh, 1 Thessalonians um, chapter 1, 1 to 5. It says, Paul, Silvanus and Timothy, to the church, of the Thessalonians in God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace to you in peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. We give thanks to God always for you all, making mention of you in our prayers, remembering without ceasing your work of faith, labour of love and patience of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. In the sight of our God, and Father, knowing, beloved brethren, your election by God. For our gospel did not come to you in word only, but also in power, and in the Holy Spirit, and in much assurance, as you know what kind of men we were among you for your sake. And and so, you know, in just reading through this, I always write down a, a, a few points here and I've, I've mentioned some of them have got carried away and sort of talked about how so we've got Paul and Silas and Timothy and you know Paul's written it uh, but he's bringing greetings from Silas or Silvanus his name's written here Silvanus and Timothy and um, you know I've put here this is one of Paul's first letters and it's quite a friendly uh, uh, letter, you know. It's like, hi folks, it's it's me, Marty Davison here, and you know, uh, uh, David Nicholas and and Phil. It, it's not it's not sort of saying some of Paul's letters. If you if you read, it will say, you know, I Paul, an apostle of, and it reminds me a little bit. I remember 
and, and someone giving me their word that their organization was going to do something. Then there was a change in the organization. I got another le letter sort of saying, well, you know, we've looked at this, we've looked at that, and we're sort of, and I thought, well, they're messing me about. So I went from being Marty Davison to, I wrote a, 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 instead of an email back, I sent them a letter, and it was Dr. Martin Davison, B-D-E-S-Q-U-B, -E and I put it all, <laughs> you know the authority which I came by and all of a sudden they came back oh we're actually really sorry to mess you about and ex that's exactly what they were doing and so you know when you read some of the other uh, letters you know Paul says I uh, you know Paul an apostle here he doesn't even need to say him. he's a he's an he's an apostle they accepted his apostleship while down the line there were rumors and everything you know and, and he was being undermined um, and so it's quite a, a friendly letter you know I love it it says sort of you know this is who you are you know he sort of declares and these newborn Christians you're a church you're a gathering you represent uh, uh, God and he affirms them as a church you know it says to the church of the Thessalonians in God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. So you've got that affirmation. And then I, oh, I love it. it says, we give thanks to you, God always for you, making mention of you in our prayers. And I thought, right, you know, what, what does Paul pray? And you, you see that Paul has this heart for those who God has used him to save. He has this heart for brothers and sisters in Christ. And it just reminds me of Jesus's heart and Jesus's prayer uh, for uh, uh, his his disciples and his followers. You know, John 17, and I would encourage you, go away and read John 17. I, I, I read it in just in my preparation and I don't want to read the whole chapter, but really it is it, it, that heart. And we need to have uh, Jesus's heart. We need to have uh, uh, Paul's heart. Let me just read out uh, verse 13. It says this, But now I come to you in these things I speak in the world, that they may have my joy fulfilled in themselves. I have given them your word, and the world has hated them because they are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. I do not pray that you should take them out of the world, but that you should keep them from the evil one. They are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. Sanctify them by your truth. Your word is truth. I just want to just uh, reiterate that. You should keep them. You know, I get that, you know, we're, we're, Paul prays and Jesus prays that they would be kept, you know, that they would continue to be a continuous, continuance, a continuance of their walk with the Lord Jesus Christ and God the Father. So, uh, you know, I think we need to have that heart, right? Maybe, maybe crank it up and go, go quicker. Uh, so we've got the Thess Thessalonian church receive Jesus as Lord and Savior. And then, they, you know, they've got work of faith, labor of love, patience of hope. And so it's done through Jesus unto God the Father. And you see their hearts. You see the sureness of their election by the manifestation of their heart. So in other words, what has happened internally is expressed externally through a work of faith, labor of love, patience of hope. And so you get the gospel here didn't come by mere words, but power, you know, I think healings, manifestations of the Holy Spirit. So you got much assurance and you'd have to say undeniable. Uh, but then why was there persecution? Well, the persecution came from, from those Jews and people who maybe had, and you read through scriptures, they had something to lose if they put their faith in, so you got people who made idols, if they put their faith in God alone, well then they'd lose their business. You know, the Jewish people, if they put their faith in Jesus Christ, well then, you know, that would have a knock-on effect as well. Um, so you can see pride restrains from receiving the fullness of the revelation of the, of the truth, which was manifest through signs and wonders. Okay. So let's get cracking on these questions. Why do I feel, uh, what do I feel God is saying to me through these verses? Uh, there's so much. 
Uh, I have to say I spent a bit of time, more than an hour, just reading about uh, it, back reading and getting off and wee tangents and so, um, you know, hence I've got so much in me, so I have to try and... I thought I'd be quick this morning, but maybe not. Okay, let's, so what I feel God is saying to me through these verses. So there's so much in this. The power of the Holy Spirit when Christ is preached is Jesus your Lord and Saviour in your life? Is your faith displayed through faith, love, hope, you know, in acts, you know, focused action towards your fellow man, intentionally finding ways uh, uh, to bless? But for me, uh, God has spoken to me in verse 2. We give thanks to God always for you all, making mention of you in our prayers. Thanks always, prayers. And so how do you apply that? It simply isn't trying to do it. You know, I've tried to do things and it just doesn't work. But to cry out to God in prayer and say, sort of God, Oh God, change my heart, O oh Lord. Give me a heart of thankfulness, love for others, and prayer. Give me a heart like Jesus, like Paul's, that would pray uh, uh, continuously for their continuance. Uh, three, is there a sin that I need to abandon? You see how they live for God. There's a, you know, a selflessly perseverant lifestyle. You know, so I would have to say there's a sin to abandon in the sense of selfishness, living for me, myself, and I, and not for God or others. Question four, do these verses speak of a promise to apply for my life? There's, there's sort of three promises that sort of hit you. Verse uh, in one you know, it says grace to you and peace. So, you know, grace is a promise. It's God's favour. It's God's enduring ability. Uh, peace, lacking of nothing, lacking of nothing to live uh, his lifestyle. And verse 5, you know, but also in power and in the Holy Spirit. So you've got the power of the Holy Spirit. And, you know, it reminds me when the word of God is preached when we live and manifest and live intentionally. It says this in Mark 16, verse 20. And they went forth and preached everywhere, the Lord working with them and confirming the word with signs following. Amen. So, question five Is there an example I need to follow? I would say Paul's example, just even in his humility, he doesn't write, you know, I, Paul, you know, he writes, I, you know, Sylvanus and Timothy, uh, you know, he includes his co-workers uh, in Christ's work. And it, there's a real uh, call to responsibility. God used him to bring salvation. And there's no attitude of, ah, we've done that, on to the next. There's a real attitude of, of love and a desire to see, uh, though the church in uh, Thessalonica uh, succeed, and so, therefore, there's a heart that prays. So, I, for me, I just feel so challenged uh, of the need to pray more. What do these verses teach me about Father, Son, and Holy Spirit? Uh, it's full, you know, uh, in the five verses, it's charged, so charged with so much about Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We see in verse 1, we see God and Jesus on the same level. You know, uh, even in the writing, Paul can underline a theological principle uh, and also be honouring. You know, so we see, you know, Jesus, he would have known as, as they followed, you know, Paul persecuted those who followed the way, who saw Jesus as the son of God. And so, you know, it, it, Paul's come into this relationship of, of Jesus and he's being confronted by Jesus. So, you know, if we say knocked off his horse and he says, Lord master and and so we see this continually uh, the whole way through that Jesus is Christ Jesus is the savior he's the anointed one of God and he is lord he is master and so here even in just the, the, you know in this line it says grace to you and peace from God our father and lord Jesus Christ and so we just uh, Paul's recognition that the, the Lord Jesus Christ is God. Um, so even in, in Paul's writing, we can see um, theological principles affirmed, you know, 
We also see in verse 3 a sequence of salvation reaffirmed. You know, we do because Jesus made it possible unto God. We also can see it's God our Abba, you know, Father, which talks about intimate relationship, who is watchful over us, caring, loving. Uh, uh, verse 5, you know, the gospel isn't just words it isn't just a story it's a divine message accompanied by the divine through uh, the divine you know the holy spirit the spirit of god confirms his message uh, you know maybe we need to realize and have a greater expectation uh, that god it's god's message and he loves to, to show up when his message is spoken about so question seven is there a warning that i must heed is there any warning? Well, verse 1 to 5 are a real, they're a real greeting, aren't they? And there's no sort of warning appears to be imputed. Um, but I want, if you wanted to extract a warning, you'd, you know, it says, remembering without ceasing. You know, remember, we're called to remember. Paul doesn't say, ah, those your fellow Thessalonians, they chased us out. We went to Berea and they chased us out of there. You know, actually what he remembers is he focuses on the work of God in and through them and affirms them. And so, you know, maybe there's a little warning there for us. You know, what uh, are your eyes focused on? Are they focused on the negative? Are they focused on the positive? Or do you have God's vision? Eight. What other lessons are there in these verses? Well, I said back in question one, you know, there's so much here. There's the power of the Holy Spirit when Christ is preached. It, you know, Jesus, Lord and Saviour, you know, Master and Saviour. Is your faith displayed through faith, love and hope? And, and so, but for me, I, I think it's it's verse five. Um, you know, for our gospel didn't come to you in word only, but also in power and in the Holy Spirit and in much assurance. And so... Uh, how do I apply that in my life? There's got to be an expectation that the Holy Spirit wants to accompany my life in power. Question 10, is there something I need to confess? I was chatting with someone and uh, uh, they said, you always go, Marty, uh, uh, you know, you always say, I'll leave that with you. And I said, yeah, you know, when I confess things, it always gets me into more trouble. I have to wash my car. I have to do this. Uh, and so we're having a laugh about that. But the word of God is a two-edged sword. And it's, it's to impact and transform our lives. You know, we've got to not just do a devotional just to do it. We've got to do it because we want uh, uh, God's word to transform our lives. And, and I, as I read this today, you know, Paul was just so godly. He was dedicated. He was disciplined. And, and for me, it causes a cry in my heart to say, God, I want to become like that. God, keep on teaching. God, keep me malleable. Um, you know, don't let me become stagnant. Don't let me become comfortable or stop growing. And, you know, where there's a spiritual decline which leads to death. God, keep me growing in you. And so I suppose my confession and my confession unto God is, God, uh, you know, cause me to grow. Cause me to stretch, no matter how painful. Hey, I've gone on a bit. God bless you. Sorry for taking up so much of your time on a Monday. But I hope you really get a flavour and a taste for this book. And let's get into it together. God bless. See you tomorrow.